Stories live, stories inspire, stories teach, provoke and stay forever. And yes, every story matters. Welcome to Storied. Today I bring to you a story of a lawyer, a professional who through her sheer hard work, intelligence and tenacity has redefined the way corporate law is practiced in India. Some say if she's on your side then you don't have to worry. From starting up a legal practice at a time when it was unheard in India to today becoming a force to reckon with. Let's listen to the story of none other than Zia Modi. Welcome to the show Zia. Zia we don't hear much these days about how you started. So there was something called Zia Modi Chambers. From Zia Modi Chambers to becoming the managing partner of AZB. Tell us the journey when you started how was it? Okay. So Chambers of Zia Modi was started after a long journey in and of itself. I went to England, studied my law, went to America, did my masters, went to work with a New York law firm for 5 years in Manhattan, came back home, got married, went to court for about 8 or 9 years every day and then started Chambers of Zia Modi. <laughs> So it wasn't just the first startup that I had it was a journey which ended because when I first came back from India uh came back to India uh, there was really no MNA India hadn't opened up Manmohan Singh hadn't given his 1991 policy um so Chambers of Zia Modi was really as a result of India opening up if you like yeah and how was it at that time fabulous we were 12 people um everybody knew everything about each other uh, we all had cold pizza for dinner together we uh, learned everything new that the reserve bank was coming out with every day we had a big fat green plastic book called the exchange control manual which doesn't exist now and we learned we had great fun everyone knows you are a workaholic other than you know the hard work what are the two things you think you did right to be where you are today i was lucky enough to um have the right young people believe in what i was doing and join us um and uh, try to train them retain them work with them become my partners so people it's all about people this this uh, business of law uh, and the second was to always set a very very high quality as the benchmark which included first and foremost honesty integrity to the letter head second is deep domain in everything that you talked about um the third was accessibility responsiveness um and of course hard work yeah one question which i wanted to ask you is as a leader today who has built such a force to reckon with enterprise you know to rise and to scale up somewhere you have to be more thick skinned and less emotional and i hear two sides of the story about you that you're very passionate and emotional and some say you are a tough nut to crack i think so, i'm a bit of both okay fewer things surprise me I think I'm quite tough uh, uh, and able to say no now uh when maybe 10 years ago I would be a little more diffident. So I think that it's easier for me to talk straighter simply because I follow the philosophy that I just don't have time. So there's no point beating around the bush. It's better you come down to brass tacks. Uh but then I think I still remain emotional in the sense that you know I think I'm a woman at the end of the day. I believe I have a fairly high sense of EQ. Uh I get upset if my lawyers are upset. Uh if our partners are worried about something, I want to try and resolve it. So it's a very mama kind of <laughs> <laughs> EQ that I still retain. Talking about being thick skinned and as a lawyer, lawyers are generally not regarded as emotional people. When you go to work, you know a client is a client uh, i think what lawyers tend to do and it may not be a bad thing is 
you should not take your client's problems home with you yeah. too much. Now, it's easy to say and it depends. For myself, if I have a negotiation that I'm doing and it carries over the next day, I don't take it home with me. Yeah. But if I have a litigation where my client is losing yeah. and I have to be strategizing and I have to be thinking, I take it home with me. So it depends each one, you know. I live with the litigation. I don't live with the MNA. MNA I can deal with, I can switch off. Litigation consumes me. Yeah, okay. You know, talking about passion, how have you remained so passionate over the years? One, I think it's God's blessings. Two, I just love what I do. So I always tease my partners that if I stop liking coming into the office more than 20% of the year, then they won't have to see me again. <laughs> but uh, I enjoy the infectious energy of the youngsters. I love the debate with uh, our partners. Uh, clients are right now willing to engage in nuanced debates, which they never were before. Uh, everyone wants to be de-risked. Nobody wants a problem in life. And so it's constant innovation, thinking that one step ahead, wearing a regulator's hat, how would he think, stuff like that. So you're saying that you're still challenged? I thought at your stage, everything would come very easy. It's almost never a day when I'm not doing something different. So you'll say that's also a secret of all the energy and enthusiasm? It's just everything is never the same. Something new hits you every day. Yeah, yeah. Now, you may put it in the corner, you may park it, you may write it down on a notepad, uh, but it will come back again sometime. Zia, one thing, if you had to say your story, what's your story, Zia Modi's story, what would you say if you had to write your story? It's a journey of extraordinary bounty from the Almighty. I was the only girl, I was the eldest child, I was given the opportunity to study in the best schools. I experienced the joys of working in Manhattan for five years. I have a husband who is so completely supportive and proud. I have three daughters who are fantastic. I have two parents to die for. So my story is really one of being provided an ecosystem which at every single milestone of my life allowed me to be my professional best. Do you also think that you have an attitude which sees things in a positive way? Sometimes, most times, but I can also switch if the mood is wrong. <laughs> but uh, generally, yeah, I think I'm generally bouncy in terms of my mood. Yeah, and one thing which uh, people say about firms, like, you know, the top firms in India, that there is a huge uh, weightage given to the personality. Like Zia Modi is like a big personality and so for a few, you know, one or two other firms. What do you have to say about it? What's the legacy? What's the plan? So I think, uh, you know, we are all young firms in the sense that uh, people are surprised to know that we are less than 20 years old. Yeah. Uh, so we've run very, very hard and we've worked very, very hard um, and, uh, you know, are there young partners who are now my senior partners who've been with me for 10 years, 15 years, 16 years? Yes, they are. Uh, it's just sometimes that my personality overshadows just because I'm so big and talkative and, you know, <laughs> whatever. But uh, uh, there is definitely a very visible, at least to the others in the firm, rung of senior succession that is definitely taking their place. Uh, letting me not do a lot of the things that I shouldn't be doing, stepping in in terms of making the cut. So it will happen. I just think that, like me, other firms have dominant personalities. Um, and uh, we've been on the road for 20 years longer than our younger partners. Yes. So that's 20 years, is 20 years. What does failure mean to you, Zia? Not having somebody trust me. Uh -huh. Having a client feel let down, having a partner feel let down, uh, losing trust. I does hope it, I never have to do that. Does it affect you? Yeah, terribly. Have you failed? Sometimes. 
But you believe only in success? Well, <laughs> can't have it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think failure would not be uh, coming close to you. You right? learn from failure. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I've had my share of setbacks which uh, I've gone back and introspected. And uh, of course, everybody does things wrong. Yeah, yeah. The challenge is to learn from them. Yeah. What do you do other than work? I chat with my husband. <laughs> I see a couple of movies sometimes. That we'll have to ask him, right? Yes. That how much do you chat with him? That you'll have to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Catch up with the girls, go on holidays. We love going on short holidays. We go to Kenya, we go to Goa, we go to America. Few short holidays during the year I like to grab. There'll be people watching this and youngsters and entrepreneurs and startups who'd love to hear from you. What should they be thinking and doing as they charter their own journeys? I think the main thing is, you know, uh, no shortcuts. There just are no shortcuts. Um, and I don't just mean shortcuts in terms of time. I mean shortcuts in terms of thought process. Uh, shortcuts not to say the wrong thing, to just get things done quickly. Um, once you start having small lies, they become big lies. And as I always say, you forget what you lied about. You don't forget the truth. But you haven't figured out which story you told in your story, which is the story, right? Yeah. So I think that, you know, being committed to what you're doing, if you don't like what you're doing, change it. Don't stick with it because it will not sustain. So find exactly what makes you thrilled every day. Yeah. First, you are a lawyer, a professional and a woman. Do you think the surrounding make, made you at any point realize that you are a woman first and a lawyer second and a professional? No, I think we grew up pretty equal. Yeah. And uh, so, at least at home, I didn't feel unequal. When I came back to the Bombay High Court, I realized I was probably one of the very few women. But uh, not being shy, I persevered <laughs> and I made Can myself imagine. felt. <laughs> Can't imagine. Can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you would have. <laughs> just hang in there. Just yeah. Hang in there. You have to just go back and be better and stronger and harder working and get more noticed and be more visible and stick to it. Are stick you spiritual? Yes, I am a Baha'i by religion. Believe in the Baha'i faith. Um, definitely believe in the God, oneness of mankind, so I hope so. Wow, Zia, it's an honor. You know, I'm just feeling so motivated talking <laughs> to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Got it. Founders realize as they grow that it's very lonely. And uh, did you ever experience loneliness? And, oh, yes. And how uh, did you deal with it? Uh, there were, I think when you when you're a founder or you're the chairman or the leader of a company, every tough decision is a lonely decision. I think brands today are built by karma. <laughs> if you want, I think we've gone back to, if you do good, you'll do good. Okay, that kind of stuff. Simply because today there's the information flows far more freely and a brand which does cool things is talked about that much more.